I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, this is Jason Dean with the Joe Blow Movie Network. I don't know whether to blame it on the actor or the director, but sometimes actors are caught trying a little too hard. So let's count down our top 10 overacting moments. Here we go. Number 10 is Jim Carrey from Liar Liar. Not his performance in the movie so much as his off-screen antics in the outtakes reel seen here. He's already known for being completely over the top, but that movie particularly was supposed to be the start of him changing his style. 105? Yeah, in your bra. Your Honor, I object. You would! Overactor! Jazz up! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. They're on to me! Number 9 is low-hanging fruit for sure. Raise your hand if you're surprised to see one of the Twilight movies on this list. No takers? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. But even among all of the overacting in that franchise, one man still stands out. Check out these clips of Michael Sheen as the head of the Volturi. Young Bella. Immortality becomes you. Many times a small budget movie ends up with memorable performances for all of the wrong reasons. Stephen King's Langoliers was just plain bad on so many levels, it's hard to imagine how it got made. But then there's Bronson Pinchot who just totally went for it as the unstable and psychotic corporate executive Craig Toomey. Scaring the little girl! Scaring the little girl! Lady! We're diverting to some tin pot airport in the middle of nowhere! I've got better things to think about than scaring the little girl! <laughs> Number seven is another easy one to make fun of. Chris Klein was known for the American Pie movies mostly, and let's be honest, the acting required for that franchise isn't too hard to pull off. But task him with playing an Interpol agent and give him a bad script full of crappy one-liners and you get one hell of an overacting performance. I've tracked him through 11 major cities on four continents and never come close, not once. This guy walks through the raindrops, and anybody that's against him is either dead or on their way. Now he's the last man standing. Number six on our list is a bit of an enigma, since Eddie Redmayne won a Best Actor Oscar the same year this movie came out. Although I love the Wachowskis for everything they have given us, I blame the directors for Redmayne's insane over-the-top portrayal of an intergalactic aristocrat in Jupiter Ascending. How dare you? My mother told me what was necessary to rule in this universe? By killing people? I CREATE LIFE! Number five has become an internet meme, and for good reason. Pierce Brosnan has given us so many great roles that I have to think his portrayal of the debt collector, known only as Taffin, was a reflection of either drugs, inexperience, or the worst possible directing one could get. Maybe it was a combination, I don't know, but his acting is so bad that it's a masterclass in how not to do it. It's like talking to a brick wall. What the hell do you know? What is this, some crappy macho prerogative? A topic women can't discuss. What goes on in this town is none of your business. As long as I'm living here, it is. Then maybe you shouldn't be living here! Well, that's easily fixed. I have no explanation for number four. Ryan O'Neill has been acting since 1960. But you know, bad dialogue, bad direction, and just bad line reading can take even a seasoned actor and make him into the laughing stock of the internet. Such is the case with O'Neill's performance in the little known movie, Tough Guys Don't Dance. But what else would you expect from a movie with that title? He's having an affair with your wife. I don't think we should talk about it. Unless you're prepared to kill them. Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god! Oh man! Oh god!
Number three is Battlefield Earth. Is there anything else for me to say? I mean, John Travolta delivered one of the most over-the-top performances of his career, and that's really saying something. The movie is overflowing with cheese, and if you add Travolta's psychotic laughing and overacted line delivery, you get nothing short of an amazing performance, and not in a good way. Off this disgusting excuse of a planet. I just want to do whatever serves the corporation best, sir. Very admirable. <laughs> I do what I can, which is why we've decided to keep you on for another tour of service. It explicitly says that this is a temporary assignment. Yes? Are you not aware that I graduated top of my class? Quite an accomplishment. Jeremy Irons in Dungeons and Dragons. That's it. If you've seen the movie, you know there's nothing left to say. If you haven't seen the movie, let me tell you that you won't find anyone else who chews up the scenery, spits it out, and then chews it up again like Jeremy Irons does in this film. He is so intense and so passionate with his line delivery, you might think he truly believes he really is a fantasy villain. You knew it was coming. Don't act surprised. Nick Cage's performance in The Wicker Man is absolutely legendary. His overacting in this movie has transcended beyond internet memes and has approached pop culture reference levels far bigger than the original movie ever could itself. Bees will never be the same again. How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? You bitches! You bitches! This is murder! Murder! You'll all be guilty! And you're doing it for nothing! What is it? What is it? What is it? What is that? What is it? Oh no! No, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I'm losing my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Ah! Oh, God. So there's our top 10 overacting moments. Tell us down below which one is your favorite. I'm Jason Dean for the Joe Blow Movie Network, and thanks for watching.